What's up guys, welcome back to the channel, back to another video. And in today's video, um, we're here with the 550, like I said in the last video. And the goal is, is to try to get this thing to run and drive. I mean, possibly run and drive it back to the place where it came from, which is pick a pull to look at some more parts for another car. So that is the goal by the end of the day. Hopefully we can get this thing running and driving. That would be so, so, so sick. And this video guys is brought to you guys by FCP Euro. So shout out to FCP Euro. We literally have everything we need from transmission gaskets, transmission bolts, seals. Um, this is, I believe the PCB for this car. It has has a um, suction issue so I believe it's this and this so hopefully we're gonna try to fix that in today's video as well and then we also have a leak from our fuel sending unit we got this from FCP as well including our fluids and our transmission pan so again if you guys want anything from FCP or with their lifetime warranty make sure to check them out down below but without further ado let's go ahead and get into today's video and just drop this pan now there is two things that could happen once we actually get this pan outside of the car so the first thing it could be is that this transmission could be completely out of fluids and if it's completely out of fluids it's not the end of the world I mean literally just put fluids inside of it and everything's gonna be gravy in the navy that'd be absolutely amazing uh the second thing is it could be filled with fluids but we find out that one of the seals are cracked and that is also really good news but if the seals aren't cracked and there is lots of fluids in there um it could be very bad news because it could be the megatronics and then at that point we just wasted all of that and uh yeah, I mean, we're gonna need a new transmission. So I'm hoping, hoping guys, it is not number three. And yes, we are doing this in my backyard with these quick jacks. So shout out to quick jacks for these things. They are honestly a lifesaver. It literally feels like I have a lift in my backyard. So that is super sick. But without further ado, enough talking, Nora. Let's go ahead and drop that pan. All right, guys, moment of truth. This is the guy we're worried about. Please, Lord, let it be cracked. <laughs> Dang, it looks good, huh? It doesn't look half bad. Rip. So now we're moving those other four gaskets, guys. So there's usually like a bridge one right over here that we already moved. It looked fine, honestly. And then there's those four right there in the middle. They just look kind of pressed in. I, mean, I doubt those are ever really cracked. Um, so that's kind of unfortunate. So we're gonna go ahead and replace everything. We did have low fluids. So I'm trying to, trying to be positive here, but I have low expectations at this point. So wish us luck, guys. All right, guys, first start up. Let's go ahead, start this thing up and hope to God this thing actually goes between gears. Cause if it doesn't, um, I don't know our plans for this thing exactly. <laughs> Three, two, one. Okay, so far so good, blowing cold AC. That's all great in the Navy, but obviously if the train doesn't work, we're just gonna leave it running guys and uh, we're gonna try to pump in more fluids. Guys, so far it took five bottles and we put a little bit of the old fluid. When I say a little bit, it took a lot. And the reason being is because this this transmission does have over 200,000 miles and uh, some of this old fluid is actually technically considered good for it. So we did put some of the old fluids, five new quarts, and now it finally started dripping after literally half of what we had inside of it and then five bottles. So fingers crossed guys, this might actually be a difference and obviously we replaced all the sleeves, the gaskets, everything, um, new pan, new, um, new everything. So uh, fingers crossed guys, Let's put the car in gear and if this thing starts moving, I'm gonna be so, so, so happy. Oh my Lord, it's in drive.
guys, so the weirdest thing ever, as you guys can see, this wheel was turning only when we put the car in neutral. When we put it in drive or reverse, literally it was not going at all. I don't know why, like it actually go in gear, but when I rev it up, nothing happens. There's no lights being thrown on the dashboard. There's no codes on this car. So that's super weird that when you put it in neutral, it wants to go, but in drive and reverse, nothing happens. Craziest thing ever I've never seen. This is why I don't like five series, six series, seven series. They're just very complicated cars. And uh, we just did literally the full transmission service kit. So the next step would have to be a Megatronics or possibly another transmission. And that being said, I did the same thing on my seven series and it still ended up being messed up. So we're gonna try to do more research just because it's really weird. Like why would neutral go in gear unless something's physically damaged inside the gearbox to where literally when they put it in neutral, it thinks it's in drive, which is uh, some weird stuff. And at this point guys, I decided instead of doing more research on the transmission, cause I'm literally getting just a headache trying to do research and stuff like that, trying to figure out what's going on with this thing. Um, I was like, you know what? Let me just go ahead and replace the PCVs. So as you guys can see, the gasket's actually blown on here, which is a very common issue. My 650, I think it was a similar issue as well. So we decided to replace both of these with FCP Euro, OE parts. Um, so definitely ended up fixing the bogging issue that I was having because I was getting a half check engine and I think it was because of that because I stopped having a check engine light once I actually replaced this part. So I was super happy about that. Also shout out to Shop Life TV. I don't know if I mentioned it earlier, but Shop Life TV, I contacted him in regards to the transmission issue and uh, he knows he's pretty much like a BMW genius when it comes to this kind of stuff. And he told me um, to check a few things. That's what I did. I went ahead and dropped the pan, uh, checked the fluids again, all that stuff. And I, was, I decided, you know what, I might as well, might as well We'll just recycle these fluids and reuse this pan as well for a future project put back on the original pan and uh, long story short talk to shop life tv and uh basically the situation with the transmission is with the kind of mileage that it has and the way that it's acting um there is no pressure within the transmission so odds are it probably is a bad transmission could also be a bad pump that's not actually pumping fluids could be a bunch of things but it, it's not an easy thing it's not a simple thing um so again just shout out to shop life tv for communicating with me and helping me out during this exact moment that I was working on this car. But yeah guys, this thing just looks so, so, so good and I came down to a realization. Guys, I'm just realizing as well, this is my second E60 that I've actually called quits on, mainly because I've learned my lesson with a 7 Series. I don't know if you guys remember, but the 7 Series, I ended up swapping the transmission. It still had transmission issues and that transmission cost me $2,700. Now this car, salvage title with 200,000 miles, M Sport, is only honestly worth about four to $5,000 maximum. I honestly saw a clean title one of these selling for five thousand dollars so i doubt i could probably get five maybe you can get 35 to four for this and considering i'm already 25 into it and a transmission costs about fifteen hundred dollars the cheapest one i could find actually technically the cheapest one i could find is about twelve hundred dollars if i get that transmission end up having the exact same issues as the seven series where it needs coding and then it still ended up that that other transmission had issues um i'll be in it too deep and i'll be losing money on this build you guys know what the end goal is for the end of this year and i'm gonna have to try to play it as smart as possible now this car um, I could do one of two things. We can go ahead and sell it as is. I'm sure I can get my $2,500 back just because it's an M Sport, complete M Sport, um, LCI with LCI lights and everything. And the interior is fully loaded. Now this thing's an absolutely insane car and I really wanted it to run. It, it was actually the exact same color as my E60 M5 that I couldn't get running. And it has just as many specs in the inside as the E60 M5 I had. It was absolutely insane. And it is just one coincidence. And honestly guys, at this point in my life, um, I still really want an E60 that's running, whether that's an E60 M5 or an E60 535. I just want kind of an E60 on this channel. So that's what I'm kind of considering. So the first option is to sell it as is for $2,500 so we can get out of this and not lose any money. Pretty much just break even. Or what we can do is keep this car as a donor car and a parts car and find ourselves a crushed 535i with lower mileage, transfer this entire M Sport kit on there, transfer the entire, you know, sport, because we have sport seats in here. We have heads of display, sport steering wheel, a bunch of good stuff in this car. And this is an LCI, so it's LCI. LCI door panels, LCI seats, LCI headlights, LCI taillights, M Sport wheels. So again, this car is a lot of really, really, really good parts. Honestly, a part out would be ideal, but I don't want to go ahead and part out cars. It's just, it takes a lot of time and I'm not able to actually do what I love, which is YouTube. So again, first option, should we just get rid of this thing, break even $2,500 and just move on? Or should we just roll this into the backyard for now, start on the E91 M3 project and uh, just wait till we find a 535, the exact same color that needs a front end and just start swapping parts over and build that car car because I think a 535 would be pretty sick especially if you do some bolt-ons on there and just try to enjoy it I think it'd be pretty dope
All right, guys, so we finally got the E91 wagon right up here. This is going to be the M3, hopefully, in the next couple of weeks, possibly a month, maybe two months. We'll see how things go. I have no idea. I've never actually done a project like this, and especially this is probably like testing my limits to the complete max. So we'll see how this project goes, but I'm so excited to start getting to that. Um, we do have the... Pre oh, my God, bro. I was almost going to say M5. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like an up, but this thing looks almost exactly like the M5 that I had, the E60 M5. Um, and by the way, um, shout out to my boy Alon for coming over and helping me move all these cars. Um, because honestly, there's no way I can do this on my own. You guys saw me struggle trying to move the E91 on my own over here. Almost impossible. You need at least two guys. But yeah, since the car is just chilling over here, Alon had the good idea. He's like, hey, no, you should at least try to clean this thing up. We were revving this thing. We were just using the keyless entry, all the features. This thing is just so mint, other than the transmission. So I say, and Alon says, let's go ahead and just clean it up, make it look super good, and just leave it back here. And if we find a transmission in the upcoming months it's not gonna be our priority but if we find a transmission then we end up swapping it. if i cannot find a good transmission for a good deal then we'll just end up using this car for parts mainly because guys this engine is so solid everything is so solid it just hurts like literally it sounds so good too it just hurts to part this whole thing out because of a transmission so if we can find a good deal on one um we'll just keep it back here for a little bit we're not gonna do any fast and rash decisions on this because we obviously have the e91 build and we're gonna be spending all of our time on that so without further ado let's just go ahead and put you guys on time lapse and just get this thing as clean as it could possibly be just so at least we can see this thing in all of its glory. And guys, we are at the end of the video. So yeah, the 550i is, uh, it's, it's at that same situation where we were with the E60 M5. And uh, the situation is, is it worth spending the money on this car? Because the car, the 5 series, 6 series, or 7 series, I look at everything in a financial way. And the 5, 6, and 7 is very, very, very difficult cars to sell. Like they don't really have a huge um, market. So in the secondhand market, they're pretty hard to sell. And that's where they go for a lot cheaper than the 1, 2, 3, and 4. And then originally they were way more expensive than the 1, 2, 3, and 4. The 5, 6, and 7 are like the flagships of BMWs. But for some reason, they just have a lot of issues and they're just big cars and that's the reason why many people just don't want to buy them especially in the used market and that's why they're just long story short those bmws that bring the bmw the name of unreliability but that being said i really wanted to get that car on this board to get it towards the ra dream um but and i i want to make that happen if, i mean if we can find a good deal on a transmission i'm gonna hit up a few pickup pulls i actually went to pick a pull yesterday i found a 550i but the engine was there but the transmission was missing so that transmission is really sought out for it looks like that transmission has common failure points and if we can find that transmission for under maybe like $600 I'm going to cop that transmission and try to do that swap uh, but until then um, either I'll look for a transmission or I'll look for a 535 on Copart that needs a M Sport kit that needs an LCI upgrade and needs pretty much the whole conversion and then we can use our car as at least a good donor car for that car because I think a 535 would also be really 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 sick so that being said we do have two plans for it I don't really want to part it out I don't really want to get rid of it but uh there is some good news to this video so finally 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 guys the E91 build is back on track we did end up picking up our donor car it's gonna be coming in this week hopefully by the end of this week so if it comes in sooner uh, I'll be able to show you guys our donor car let's just say you guys may be very proud of me because I think I got the best donor car I could get for the money. So that being said, the E91 project is on the way. It's going to be so, so, so sick. I cannot wait to start diving into it. The 550i is going to be put off to the side, but as soon as we can get back onto that project, we will. That's more of like a side project slash flip slash enjoying car. So it's not really like the main focus of the channel, but the main focus of the next couple of videos is going to be obviously the Supra and the E91 M3 build. So if you guys are excited for that, make sure to smash the like button. But without further ado, I love y'all so much. Remember to stay humble. I'll see y'all on the next one. Peace out.